News 6 is brought to you by a grant from the Whirlpool Corporation, Finley Division. Hello and welcome to News 6. I'm Melissa Tuttle. Today's show is presented by Mr. Don Leaders and Mr. Ray Elbin, 6th grade class from Liberty Benton Elementary in Findlay, Ohio. In our show today, we will show you some members of our community and their lifetime projects and a once-in-a-lifetime celebration for our school. Here's Erica with our first story. Mr. W Mike Wittenmeyer of Finley has an unusual hobby. He dives for shells. Mr. Wittenmeyer is a Navy recruiter and first started collecting and diving for shells when he was stationed in Cuba. Since he has been to many parts of the world, he has collected over 100 different and beautiful shells and has dove as deep as 90 feet. But some of the shells he has collected have been washed on the beach. Some of his favorite shells are the great spotted crawry, the Venus comb, and many more favorites. Mr. Wittenmeyer is going back to sea next year and plans to collect more shells. Searching for shells in the ocean is an exciting experience, and Mrs. Barb de Hayes of Finley finds her collection just as exciting. Here's Sean to tell us about it. Mrs. Barb de Hayes collects dolls, but not just ordinary dolls. Mrs. de Hayes collects antique dolls. Heather Monday interviewed her. How did you get interested? How did I get interested? My parents were antique dealers and they dragged, dragged me all over the place to shows and auctions and I decided I needed something to be able to get along with them and enjoy. And dolls seemed to interest me the most. How old is your oldest doll? 1790. And there are two of them, a king and a queen. They're one of a kind. The king stands about this tall and is all wooden jointed and the queen has a solid wax head and looks much like the Madonna. What's the most unusual doll you have? The most unusual is a mycin, which is a form of china. She's very shiny and she has a flesh tone to her and there may only be at the most three of them in the world. What's your favorite doll? A bilo baby. And the Bilo Baby was made in 1923 and was as popular then uh, as the Barbie and Ken are now. And it took me a long time to pay for that baby. Could you tell a little bit about your bicentennial doll? Yes, I was on the Hancock County Bicentennial Committee. And I had, uh, there's only one doll, new doll, that I enjoy the type and it's a wax and it's Betsy Ross and it was made by Louis Sorensen. It's a National Institute of Art doll maker and she is molded wax and she holds a flag and her body is uh, uh, stuffed and she's very pretty. Do you repair the dolls yourself? Well, I have a restoration hospital and I repair dolls for people all across the United States and other items that are related to them. Uh, a few of the dolls in my collection are repaired, but mostly just the bodies. The rest of them are all original. Mrs. D. Hayes is also a dealer in the United States and has sold a doll for as much as $17,000. Mrs. D. Hayes has been collecting dolls for almost her entire life. And another member of our community also has a lifetime collection. Cindy will tell us about it. Pastor Paul Fry of Janeiro, Ohio, collects crosses. Pastor Fry started collecting crosses when he was 10 years old and now has about 900 crosses in his church. He has many unusual crosses which are made out of unusual materials. His first cross was made out of pressed cardboard. He also has one out of pressed flowers, 
sliced black walnut shell, one that has one that is hand carved, and one that is made from the skeleton of a fish called the crucifix fish. Pastor Fry's oldest crosses, cross is 250 years old. Pastor Fry's says he likes to collect crosses because they mean a lot to him. Collecting crosses has been a lifetime project for Pastor Fry. Fry's and another lifetime project is that of Mr. and Mrs. D.D. Lawrence of Finley. Mike has a story. Mr. and Mrs. D.D. Lawrence, through a community effort, have restored an old schoolhouse called the Little Red Schoolhouse. Amy Klum interviewed Mr. Lawrence, and he told her ha how it was restored. What classes were offered? Mainly the fundamentals, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Of course, along with that, they had uh, uh, geography and history, physiology, spelling. Uh, spent a lot of time on reading, writing, and arithmetic. How long did it take to restore the school? Uh, approximately nine months. Uh, it, uh, we thought after we uh, gave it consideration that we would be interested in restoring it. And we talked it over and decided we'd like to come down to the schoolhouse and uh, uh, look at it first. So we walked down here in honor of the teachers that taught here. The uh, schoolhouse wasn't in very good condition. When you opened the door, we'd see a good many rodents come from the from the storage grain over here. And the uh, uh, plaster was hanging down, uh, cobwebs, and it was a sight to see. Uh, not very good condition. And most of the women said, especially women, said, oh, we can't do it. But the several of us, um, uh, a number of the men, decided, well, we, we can. What items are still here? Oh, yes. Well, the floor is still here. The windows are still here. The wainscoting is still here. The bell that you rang back there a while ago, we had to replace. The belfry is still there. Uh, the roof was in pretty good condition. And, uh, of course, we, uh, we uh, had the roof painted. It's a metal roof. It used to be shingles, you know. This is the original house here. And of course, we restored, tried to restore it just like it is. Eight grades attended the schoolhouse, and all eight grades were taught by one teacher. But it is much different today. Mr. and Mrs. D.D. D. Lawrence are very proud of their schoolhouse. And our school is very proud of our girls cross country team. Melissa tells us about it. What does it feel like to be a state champion? Well, our high school girls cross country team knows. They won a single A competition by two points. Here's some reactions of the team members. I knew for sure that we lost because he told me that I had to do a lot better than I, than I did. So I kind of left for a while and then I came back and they, like the coach thought we lost too and he was telling everybody we lost. And he told us we won and I, I couldn't believe it. I, I was so happy I couldn't stop crying. <laughs> it, was, it was great. I don't know. I was real excited about it. It felt really great to me. I thought it was pretty good. I just thought it was really exciting. Thank you for joining us. Be here next week when Farmer Elementary from Farmer, Ohio will present News 6. Have a nice week and a happy Thanksgiving. News 6 is brought to you by a grant from the Whirlpool Corporation, Finley Division.